this year as, as kind of a, a team, uh, I guess you would say, uh, culture that we're trying to build here and, and get this place um, you know, back every year and year out to be competing for CAA championships. We've talked about really two things, um, accountability and belief. Um, I think those two things sum up everything you need to know about being part of a, an organization that's trying to build a culture. Yeah, we uh, we call ourselves the culture, so you know it's a little play off of uh, the Migos. So we uh, we always talk about our culture and what that means, and you know how do we define that? And so that that's really what we embody. It's what we believe in. Um, you know, being accountable not only to yourself but your teammates on and off the field, and then certainly the the belief part is 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 really trust. Um, we're going to ask them to do things that they're probably not comfortable with in terms of scheme, or maybe a a different position that they've never played before, and they have to believe in us that we're, we're, we're trying to lead them in the right direction. So, uh, Coach, uh, I guess we'll start. Uh, well, first of all, Drew, welcome. For those uh, not familiar with Drew Belcher, came here as a quarterback, played some time at QB, made the transition to uh, H-back tight end, officially a tight end now. Let's first talk about that a little bit. Kind of a, an interesting go from throwing it to, to catching it. Uh, how's that been for you? Uh, it's been going well. You know, I think this off season was really big for me. Uh, being able to, you know, kind of take a step back and just start learning the basics of tight end. You know, last year I kind of got into it. It was right away. It was game week and stuff. We started prepping for UNH and whatnot. So having an off season was huge for me, and uh, you know, able to put on a little bit of weight in the uh, weight room and stuff. And um, you know, now it's it's a lot easier now. Joe, I, I would assume it's not a move that just anybody could make. So you got to have confidence in a guy yeah. uh, to to do something like that. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, certainly at the time it was a difficult conversation to have with Drew, but uh, he handled it um, like a professional would. You know, and and Drew's, I guess Drew's biggest and and best quality is it's all about the team with him. You know, whatever the team needed, and and at the time. Um, you know, that was something that he, he committed to, and, and now he, you know, we believe he's the best tight end in the league. I can stand here and say that because, you know, I truly believe that, um, and I don't say that about a lot of guys in a lot of positions on our team, but uh, he's going to be a weapon for us. I think last year at UNH in his first game, he had like four catches for like 60-something yards, and um, we're going to do a lot of things to get him the ball, and certainly um, just everything he does is all about the team, and everything he does is uh, he's the most coachable kid we have. He's the best leader we have. Um, he's always on time, works his butt off, and it's just everything that anyone associated with main football would want a teammate like Drew. Obviously, you know, with Drew, you know, down the field, he, he gives you something that, that is special. Um, and, and I'm really excited about having that in our room. And, and um, it's nice that those other guys can contribute the past game too. Obviously, Drew uh, does a tremendous job with all that stuff. And coming over from quarterback, he understands coverage. He understands what our concepts are and, and the timings of things and where he fits into the pass concept. Uh, and those things are all important. And, and it's really nice as a coach to have a guy coming over from quarterback who it's not just the pass game for him. You know, he can really, you know, he's really progressed in the run game. Uh, he's focused a lot on it. and. and a tribute to Drew. He's a very detail-oriented kid um, who who wants to be a perfectionist and wants to be the best at everything he does, and and so that makes my life a lot easier having guys like that who can do multiple things uh, and, and help out in both the run and pass game. Yeah, I think um, I'm excited about this year. Um, we got a lot of guys back, obviously on offense, um, a lot of playmakers, um, wideouts. Um, got a new running back, which is exciting. Got a couple of guys that are going to get a lot of playing time, a lot of meaningful time. It's going to contribute. Um, and obviously the offensive line, we lost a couple of people, but uh, we're really filling the pieces and we got some guys in there that I'm excited about. Um, you know, finishing four and six last year was tough, so there's only room for improvement there. I think both offense and defense have had great camps. Um, offensive may, has made some, some pretty big strides uh, with the quarterback receivers, young running backs stepping up. Um, the O line, you know, filling some shoes. It's going to be tough, but they've done a good job. And then defensively, you know, we got a number of guys returning. Um, you know, the cornerbacks, the, the safeties are looking good. The the D line is looking phenomenal. The linebackers are solid. So, you know, I, I think, you know, going to do a pretty good job filling the shoes. We have a lot of great pe great pieces. We got a lot of great guys returning from the year before. Um, a lot of experience and everything coming back. Um, one of the things that we need to work on is just being able to bring the same type of competitiveness every practice, every day. Sometimes we get lackadaisical. Sometimes we're not all the way, uh, you know, not focusing all the way. 
Yeah, I think the, the group, uh, going back to just the discipline, you know, our, our approach and, and to practice, to our individual um, techniques and, and those type of things, we've really attacked those um, in a better way, and, you know, making those more important than we have in the past. So the guys that, you know, have been here, they, they've, they're really spending more time, you know, implementing the techniques that we talked about in the meeting rooms. We do an individual, te you know, in individual periods. Now they're really applying that to the game situations that we put them in in practice. I love this team. I, mean, I love this team a lot. I love the team last year too, though. But this year, I really love this team. You feel me? I, most of the people that are on the scene, you know, I've done been with them for the past two, year, two to three years since I've been here. So we all together, we all gelling. You know, I'm cool with everybody on this team. I love everybody on this team. You know, I got a good relationship with everybody. Everybody loves me, so it makes it easier to just go out there on the field and just play together as a family. Obviously, Manny Passion speaks for himself. Now, he's a, a guy that's played a lot, started as a true freshman, and uh, he's developed a lot that way. And again, it goes back to that consistency, and that's what he learned to develop in his second year. He started to get his own confidence, his own idea of what the what he's going to expect all right so i coach a lot but i don't coach robots and he was able to really find his own niche in terms of what he had to do every single play which built consistency i'm trying to be all american but like first team all american you feel me i'm gonna get some picks feel me still keeping up with my pbus all that um being a great leader for the young kids that's also another goal of mine you know making sure that i'm somebody that the that the youngins like they can look up to me going into the younger corners because I mean for me that's my biggest question mark is the other side of Manny Patterson and I've been pleasantly surprised man the guys if I look at spring ball um, and look at the where they came from they must have put the work in in the summer because they came in preseason camp and already you know they're coached up all right because usually what I tell guys in the summer I'm not around so you got to be the guy continuing the progression and I've seen that progression. I think the main key is for everybody to uh, have the same goal. If you uh, have the same goal in mind when they go, when they go into the field. Everybody on the, on the field, each player needs to be able to know that the guy to the right, the guy to the left has their back. No matter what, they, have, they know what they're doing, they know their assignment. They're not trying to overcome, or, um, they're not trying to um, overproduce or do too much. And because when, when uh, guys on the team start to do, me, me included, um, start to do too much and start uh, over, trying to overcompensate for, uh, some, uh, for somebody else, that's when a big play happens. That's when they're not 100% fo focused. And so um, as a team, uh, I think we just need, just need to be able to just, just be like, no, like, just be able to be ready for that, to be honest. Uh, I think we're gonna have a really good year this year. Definitely think we're gonna have a really good year this year. We have too much talent to, to be 500. Way too much talent. The UNH game means everything to me. I wanna, 
I've been here for what four years. Still haven't seen the musket. Um, there's the coach has been here for eight years. Still haven't seen the musket. We we need to be able to bring that home. There's a lot of confidence throughout the, throughout the team. A lot of a lot of guys confident in their play, confident in the game plan, conf, uh, confident in just the team's overall um, ability to beat you in each. And so every single time that I walk into the locker room. I, I look at the post that we that, that we had there with them holding the musket, and I just I'm just ready. It just makes me uh, makes me ready. It makes me uh, anticipate for uh, for uh, UNH because I know we can beat them, and I know we will beat them. We just need to be able to um, we just need to be able to per think that think as a team and be able to just be disciplined, and we will come out with a W. Last year wasn't how uh, we expected it to turn out, and you know, everybody's hungry for for those wins to come. Um, and then beating UNH, you know, that's the first key to it all. Um, beating UNH, getting that musket, um, that's the first step to having a successful season and, and just kind of overcoming everything. I think the biggest key is, you know, overcoming those uh, those tight games in the fourth quarter. You know, the past couple of years we haven't been the greatest in those situations. So just taking that next step as a team and maturing and, and learning from the past and and just uh, edging out those teams in the fourth quarter, you know, will be successful. It means everything. We haven't beaten them in eight years. Um, it's the first game of the season. Um, getting that musket will definitely set the, the year off on the right foot. Um, so it means everything. It's the biggest game that we're going to play in thus far. Um, you know, that's it. It's the biggest game. Yeah, I think it's something you hear about even when you're not a part of this. You know, when you're in the New England area, you hear about this game from far away, and, and it's you get here and it's like, wow, this is a really big deal. And whether it's home, whether it's away, it's, it's always going to bring a ton of fans. We're always going to be excited, ready to go for it. And, and it's, it's a big battle. And, and every year, it doesn't matter who finishes higher or lower, it's always going to be close, and it's going to be a fourth quarter battle. You know, the past, whatever, eight years, um, we haven't beat them, honestly. So. And that's just point blank, that's how it is. So to get the musket, um, kind of to put us on that wave of just success and wins, and um, I think that's going to be big for us. Uh, just getting that first win, um, kind of putting us on a roll, getting us in the groove, and obviously it's for the musket, so that's all we want. Um, you know, in the fourth quarter, obviously we struggled the past couple of years, and I think we have a new identity this year and a new wave's in, and um, that's not going to be a problem this year, I think. In the fourth quarter, we're going to stand up tall. Um, we're going to face it, and we're going to be successful, and we're going to make the plays when we need to. Um, we're going to handle business, and we're going to end up on top in those games because that's obviously has been holding us back the past couple of years. And just um, from being a playoff team, beating UNH, um, all our goals that we just talked about, I think that's what's holding us back. So um, in the fourth quarter, in times of adversity, um, in times where we need to stand up and you know face a fear almost, and just create a new identity with this team. I think that's where it's going to be big. It would be a big win. It would be a big win. At the end of the day, it's it's a rivalry game. It's an important game. You know, we just have to worry about us, though. We just have to play our game, worry about us, and then those things all fall into place. It's huge. Uh, I believe in, in college football, your rivalry game should be your most important game. Um, that's why it is the number one goal of our program, is to beat New Hampshire every year. That goal will never change as long as I'm the head coach because I think it's extremely important. Uh, not only is it your rival, but they're also in the league, uh, which means uh, you know a whole lot come the end of the year. So yeah, when it's the first game of the year, it's a little different than having it as the last game like it normally is. Uh, it gets your attention all off season. You know, usually you think about it a little bit when it's at the end, but certainly you have so many games before that that it, uh, it kind of changes your mentality moving through the season. But when it's, when it's number one, um, and certainly we've been in some heartbreaking ones the last two years, losing by you know three one year and one, one point last year. Um, but again, it goes back to the point of our talent will take us only so far. And right now, um, you know, they've out-disciplined us in the fourth quarter. So that's been the message uh, really the whole offseason, especially here in camp, that um, we'll be there. Uh, I'm confident we have talent and the strength and the speed to put us in a situation and an opportunity to win. And now we just have to be mentally tough enough to, to make that play. I've been here for two years. I ain't beat UNH since. But at the end of the day, the past is in the past. It's a new year. So UNH to me is getting rid of the past on my mind and looking forward to a better future and holding that musket in my hand. Feel me? I might mess around, shoot that musket. You put that thing in my hand. I'm trying to 
try it crazy when that ran that musket, you know. I feel like we win that musket, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a party on that field. That's all I know. And you know, it's something that we've been working on all working working toward all summer, all off season, you know. So us going into that game, we got a new team, new coaches, new players, like feel me, everything is new this year. We got new mindset, new everything. So we going through this game, we try and win. We know we gonna win. So it mean everything to us, everything. They'll want the act, not the ghost. Running through it with the young and blooming said it. Less impressions, also coming to it. I've been giving yeses when I shouldn't do it. I complete the jacket, but the moves are looser. And I'm barely moving, but I'm still gonna boost them. I can work on winnings when I know you're losing. So I work the winners and they throw the Guess I have to pivot, shooting the bazookas for the facts. I need racks, paper, cash. So anytime you can bring uh, a bunch of people together that all are really passionate about the same cause, it makes for a pretty fun day, right? And you throw some golf on top of that. Uh, some good golf, some bad golf. I've seen a little bit of both today. Um, you have everybody here today wearing the main blue, supporting the Black Bears. I mean, that just makes it a special day on top of the money that's critical for our department. Black Bear athletics are crucial to our university and I wanted to make sure to come to this event which is just a wonderful place to meet our supporters, our longtime friends and to have the chance to say thank you and to say um, that I'm very committed to maintaining the wonderful excellence that we've had in this program for all of these years. So I am here uh, to be a mulligan if needed off the tee. Nice. The buy-in is I use one of your balls, if I lose it I apologize in advance. It's really the lifeblood of our program. You know, people giving back is, is why we're able to charter the games, play in the CAA, which is the best conference in FCS football, um, have an unbelievable home atmosphere. I mean, when you see uh, Black Bear Nation come together at a home game, it's special. And now, you know, I don't get to tailgate on game day, so now I get to see some of the people that do, and it's just a really uh, fun experience. And uh, like I said, just meeting people that love Maine athletics, like we love Maine football, it, it's really cool to come together and see that. I know that we cannot run Black Bear Athletics the way it is run. We can't treat our student athletes the way we want to and in the way we do treat them without the support of the people that are here today. And I'm not talking about just the staff and the group that are pulling this together. I'm, we have our major benefactors, our major donor, our major fans. They are all here um, in some context, whether representing a foundation, representing a partnership, sponsorship, or just because they're donors and fans and so we can't run it without the folks that we have, have today and so to be able to come up here and spend some time with them have some fun beautiful day put some more money in the student athlete support bank I um, mean this is just an incredible experience this is a great day on the golf course for sure and uh, you know we want to thank those people who have been supportive we want to give them an opportunity to be part and feel part of Maine athletics and hopefully that they, they feel that, that this does this one of our main objectives is to make everybody feel welcome everybody feel appreciated and everybody to have a great experience today and hopefully uh, through our work we've been able to do that it's awesome. I mean, the, the amount of people that I've interacted with today who have followed our season and just UMaine Athletics in general and how much it means to them and, and the pride that they have. And um, it's important for us as coaches to see that and hear that and also for our student athletes. And, um, and it's just, it shows you how, how important UMaine Athletics is, not only to our university, but to the state and to all our alumni across the world. So. I think honestly, um, the alums are the people who believe the most in the program because we've gone through it. And I think it's important to keep these people a part of it because it keeps us close knit and it's always great to give back to where we all graduated from. Shooting about 147. 147. Black Bear Pride being a D1 school, that's crucial not only for the University of Maine, but for our state and for our region and for the country. We, um, we have athletics at the center of so much of what we do as a part of our overall university experience. It's a part of 
the education of our students. It's critical that we have student athletes who are well integrated into the university and who are bringing their contributions and the kind of pride that comes of these programs. And I know that it's a very big deal at the University of Maine. I'm eager to be starting right in and learning much more, uh, getting to events, meeting our students, meeting our coaches, and being a part of this important portion of undergraduate and university education. A little over two years ago, we created a centralized fundraising structure for Maine Athletics. And that was a really important moment, um, not only for the present of Maine Athletics, but for the future of Maine Athletics. Uh, we created a brand, the Alphon Fund, uh, which was supported by a three-year, $1.5 million grant by the Harold Alphon Foundation that supports all of our programs. It continued you know, the tradition of our football challenge, which is a quarter of a million dollar matching fund uh, gift every year. Um, and added a $250,000 unrestricted component as well. Uh, this has really given us a well-branded, recognizable um, annual fund to support our athletic programs. So this year, um, thanks in part to over 2,700 donors to Maine Athletics, um, we, we've raised more money than we have in, in many, many, many years. So next year, we're hoping to jack that up. We'd love to see 3,000 donors this year. Um, we'd love to keep pushing the envelope and raising more and more for our programs and just continue to put our student athletes and our staff and our coaches in a position to be successful through our fundraising efforts. Sweet. With Duncan's new brown sugar cold brew. Sweetly balanced with brown sugar. We've been doing business with Hammond Lumber for about 15 years. The most important thing Hammond Lumber gives us is customer service. We have a lot of jobs going, typically four to six at one time, and we need truck deliveries on each of those once a day. So we expect multiple trucks which Hammond Lumber delivers on a regular basis for us. The things that are important to me are being able to trust my sales rep, trust the pricing, trust the delivery, and overall trust the service that Hammond Lumber provides us. Here at t Spark of Revolution and Patriots are more than a team, they're the foundation of our family tree. Some call it Yankee Land, others call it New England, we call it home. It's not for everybody, but for the ones willing to create a way through, there's a reward. You can't show it off. It's not a trophy. It's a feeling. It's a sense of belonging. It's who we are and what we stand for. We are Fisher Nation. You support your black bears at the game. Why not support them everywhere you go? The exclusive Black Bear Debit Card only at Main Savings. The Black Bear Debit Card is free to you and supports the Alphon Fund each time you use your card for a purchase. Just open a Red Wallet account at Main Savings. Stop into our College Avenue branch or any of our other convenient branches. Show your pride. Make a difference. The exclusive Black Bear Debit Card only at Main Savings. Learn more at MainSavings.com. Look at those guys, triumphing over the afternoon. Because he went on a Dunkin' one and got $2 snacks. Hey, guys. Hey. The Dunkin' Run Menu. Delicious $2 afternoon snacks. Hi, I'm Claire Fogler. And I'm Avery Fogler. And we are from Stonyville Dairy Farm in Exeter. Do you have a picky eater at home? Can't get them to eat their vegetables? Why not try a smoothie? Just combine one frozen banana, one cup blueberries, one cup frozen spinach, one tablespoon honey, two thirds cup of milk, and one third cup of plain Greek yogurt. Blend and enjoy. Ready, set, feel up. This copyrighted telecast is the property of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, under rights granted by the University of Maine. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast, or any part of it without the express written consent of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, is prohibited.
The Learfield Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through thedirectorscup.com, USA Today, or at L Directors' Cup on Twitter or Facebook. Learfield Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993.